Okay, hi there, hello. <laughs> um, it's Flirty Friday. I'm Susanna, the date maven, and um, I don't really have flirting to talk about today. I was really wanting to go a little bit deeper and talk about relationships, and I'll do that in just a moment, but in case you were not around for last week's premiere episode of Flirty Friday, just a word about kind of how this works. So every Friday at three o'clock, I'll be chatting with you on Facebook Live, and if you have questions that you want to ask for me to consider answering on the video, um, you can get those to me by emailing them to Susanna at thedatemaven.com, or you can send those through Facebook Messenger, and uh, my social media staffer will definitely pick those up. And we'll, we'll try to pick the questions that we feel will speak to the greatest number of people and have the most relevance and um, that, that we just really feel like will meet the needs of our audience. So that's how you can participate. You can also participate, of course, by giving a little thumbs up or a little heart or whatever emoji uh, seems to fit. And so going forward, we will also be hosting our broadcast from various locations in the Wichita, Kansas area featuring local businesses. And I've reached out to several business owner friends of mine. I'm excited that we'll be um, visiting a lot of different boutiques and spas and wine bars and places like that. If you have a business that you think is in alignment with my brand and my brand values and that we might share a client audience, um, then reach out to me and let's have a discussion about whether it might be a fitting place for us to do Flirty Friday. And again, my email address is Susanna at thedatemaven.com. So with no further ado, I thought that the topic I might dive into this week, I was remembering a story or I was remembering a past incident about a client that I worked with early on professionally. Um, she was a young very sweet marriage-minded young woman and she was she was really ready to settle down and start a family and, and very focused on that and one of the things that she was wrestling with was she had kind of reconnected with someone that she had been involved with before and she wasn't sure should I give it another chance should I let him back into my heart um, I'm really thinking that things might be different this time but you know there's always that reluctance and that little bit of insecurity and can I be vulnerable again? Can I go there again or am I just setting myself up for headache and heartache? And and that can be tough and I know this is something that a lot of people have wrestled with because some of us have an incredible capacity for grace and forgiveness and those are really important qualities to have in a relationship. In fact, I would dare to say that if you don't possess those qualities or if you're not cultivating those qualities, you probably aren't quite relationship ready yet. Um, but understandably, she also wanted to protect herself. Um, one therapist that I know of described it as that scenario in the Charlie Brown cartoons where Lucy keeps holding the football and Charlie Brown keeps running at the football and trying to kick it and just as he lifts up his foot to kick it, she jerks the football away and he falls flat on his back and he kind of says good grief and you know he it's only happened a million times before so he should have known that that's what was going to happen again so I, in no way would I want to set you up for that kind of experience but one of the things that I would say to you if you're entertaining the thought of going back and exploring a do-over with a former romantic partner would be to remember that there is no perfect partner out there. And I think that we can all say, well, yeah, I know that, I realize that, duh. But really let that sink in and think about what that means. There is no perfect one other out there. There are probably a handful of people who you could happily and healthfully share your life with. And so as you're sort of assessing that person, you might ask yourself, am I thinking about them through the lens of fantasy or the lens of ego? Or am I thinking about them through the lens of spirit? 
So when we get kind of in our fantasy mind about what a perfect relationship ought to look like and feel like and what the ideal is for us and they're not meeting my needs and that resentment and that resistance and, and you, you know what I'm talking about here. We can really get into an ego fed place of what I'm not getting and how this is disadvantaging me and, and I'm, you know, I'm doing all the work and they're just, um, they're not showing up. And, and if we shift to more of a mindset or a heartfelt point of view of what is this, your spirit uh, really leading you to do in that situation, um, then you can begin, I think, to take a little more responsibility for the dynamic that's between you. Uh, asking, am I, am I good enough? Is my partner good enough? And I don't mean, I'm not talking about like you should settle or you should just lower your expectations to the, 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 the bottom common denominator. But am I really being good enough in this situation? And are they really good enough that maybe 80% of the time uh, we, we are working together and we are meeting each other's needs and knowing that there might be 20% of the time where um, there's no one person who is going to meet all of your needs all of the time. So that's just the, the reality. Um, and being really aware of your limitations as well. Again, we get really stuck in that point of view of, that the arms crossed and um, uh, here's what I'm not getting and we talked about this and we've been over this and, and um, it's very easy to disappoint expectations in a relationship. So I, want, I just wanted to share that as something to chew on this week in that situation of my client who I, I talked to you about at the beginning, she did decide to re-enter that relationship because a lot of the external circumstances had changed. Things like his job and his work demands and his travel and his availability and, and maturity and willingness to sort of enter a committed long-term relationship. And so they married and they have a family and their story has a happy ending. So I wanna leave you with a quick exercise and then I also have a a date to put on your calendar. Sit down with a piece of paper or your journal. Uh, I would prefer you do this by hand because I think that engages the brain a little bit differently and more richly than if you type it, but if you need to type it, do that. It's a two-part exercise, and the first part is make a list of the last five times you were disappointed in someone. It could be any type of relationship, a romantic relationship, maybe a relationship with a family member, or a close colleague at work or a really good friend. And look at, is there a pattern here? All these times I've been disappointed or I've had my heart broken or I've been frustrated. What is the pattern of thoughts or behaviors uh, either on your end or on the other person's end? And see if, you, see if you can find those common denominators. And then the second part of the exercise is list the last five times you were delighted. And again, look for the pattern. Are there some common themes or common denominators? Now, chances are, if you had an easier time making your disappointment list than your delighted list, let that speak to you a little bit. That might say a little something about how you're showing up in relationships and the lens that you're looking through and what you're attracting to yourself. And if you find that it's as easy to make that delighted list as the disappointed list, then good for you. That's wonderful. You are probably approaching relationships and approaching the world with a sense of positive expectation. And I find that that's a, a type of expectation that tends to pay off. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I will be back talking to you next Friday at three. And, and again, I wanna emphasize my goal here is not to talk at you, but with you. So for that to happen, I need to invite your participation and um, your messages are always welcome. Even if, if I don't get to it in the Facebook Live, maybe I can shoot you a private message uh, through Messenger, or if you, you wanna say, hey, Susanna, this is my question, would you let me be anonymous? I will certainly do that, I will respect your privacy. I do want to flag July 27 as the next date for our tentative singles uh, get together. I'll give you details in the blog feed. And if you're not yet getting that blog feed, you can sign up at thedatemaven.com. There is no cost to do that and you won't land on anyone else's list. It'll just be my list only. Um, I'm, 
I've got my little GDPR privacy policy uh, ready for you to take a look at so that you can be assured that your data is not being disseminated elsewhere. But that is the best way to stay in the loop about special events that I'm involved in hosting for singles in the Wichita, Kansas area. So with that, thanks again. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Happy Flirty Friday. Mwah.